why do we call it the personal computer? Well, it's not just a box or a station, right? Your PC doesn't exist without you. And you don't just use your PC, you're its keeper. You're responsible for it. PC gamers get their hands dirty. We turn the screws, we clean the fans, we thread the cables. It's got your fingerprints on it, and that has a special kind of pride. We build our PCs, and through them, we build friendships and rivalries. We build communities and our reflexes. I'm down! We write stories, we make mods, because we get to decide what experience we want. Get the hell out of my face. God bless you, modders. PCs are scaffolding for our imaginations. That's what PC gaming means to us, to build, and to give back to your hobby as much as it gives to you. This is the PC Gaming Show 2017. Place. This is the PC Gaming Show, sponsored by Intel. How are you all doing this fine morning? Ah, yes. You're doing woo. That's excellent. I'm your host, Sean Day9 Plot, and if you have never been to this show before, it's simple. We have a slew of incredible guests who are going to talk about all their upcoming games, one after the other. So, I'd like to warmly welcome all of you for coming out to the beautiful Ace Hotel Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Twitch chat, it's a pleasure to have you here. I know that you're currently being productive and constructive in chat right now. <laughs> now, if you're interested in watching in another language, over at PCGamingShow.com, we have German, Spanish, Russian, Chinese. Feel free to head there or stay right here for English coverage. And without any further ado, let's find out what's happening this year at the PC Gaming Show. This is the PC Gaming Show. Live from the theater at Ace Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, California. Coming up, Intel explores the future of PC gaming. New announcements from Xbox. Jordan Weissman, the creator of MechWarrior, gives a first ever look at Battletech's campaign. New footage for Middle Earth Shadow of War. A new game from Play Entertainment. New gameplay from Total War, Warhammer 2. New announcements for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. An exciting reveal from Tripwire Interactive. And plenty more. Now, once again, Sean Plot. Thank you so much, evil omnipotent voice in the sky. Let's talk about our very first game. It is an expansion to the legendary and infamous turn-based strategy game, XCOM 2. Let's take a look. Supposed to be here. At last, a true battle. Oh, if only you knew the truth. three resistance groups that we consider a legitimate threat to Advent. Together, they'd make one hell of a fighting force. Too bad they hate each other. So, you do exist. They were sent here to purge the lost. You are safe here. Good. At 
suppose we should begin then. Now the real war begins. to talk about XCOM 2 War. The Chosen is the creative director of XCOM 2 over at Firaxis. Jake Solomon, pleasure to have you here today. This is very exciting. We finally get to talk about this. So yes, I'm very pumped. Thank you for having us. Well then tell us, what is War of the Chosen all about? Well, so the goal with this game really was to make something massive. So we added a ton of new enemies, lots of new soldier classes, new environments, story, strategy systems, just tons of new toys for players to engage with. And I understand that it's an expansion that's even larger than any of the ones you've done previously. Yeah, e easily twice the size of the previous XCOM expansion. It is, it is massive. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the content that's in there. Who yep. are the Chosen? The Chosen, right. You saw them. They starred in the trailer. So they were designed to be the ultimate enemies of XCOM. They are three almost uh, champions of the alien army. Um, and they have three very distinct personalities and three very distinct fighting styles. And the player is going to get to know those very well because over the course of a whole game, they're going to fight each of those Chosen multiple times. And the Chosen, just like the player, uh, they get stronger over the course of the game. They learn new skills, new abilities. They even gain new procedural strengths that the player is going to have to contend with. So in a sense, it's not like a normal enemy where you might see a Chosen in one battle and a Chosen in the next. It will be the same Chosen again and again and again getting new strengths. That's right. That's right. And so you just they, they always have something new up their sleeve because they're always learning sort of new tricks. Well, you mentioned the personalities of the different Chosen. Yeah. Walk me through who the Chosen are and what these strengths and weaknesses might be. Yeah, so for example, there's the Assassin, and she, her personality is, is tied up in duty and honor. She feels very honor-bound to serve her masters, her creators, and she does that, of course, by hunting down XCOM and, and killing soldiers, you know. <laughs> um, A natural expression of identity. We're bringing back some familiar elements from earlier games, yes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but combat-wise, she's a mix of stealth and close quarters combat, so she can vanish from sight, and she uses that to get in close on the soldiers and use her blade. So, like the other Chosen, she's very powerful, and she has a, a sort of unique fighting style that the player hasn't seen before. And we've talked about this new obstacle in the form of the Chosen. You know, mentioned the Assassin. Who are the right. other two? There's the Hunter. That's more of a long-range sniper. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Warlock, which is, you know, a Warlock. So, <laughs> so yeah, Ed, Ed, doesn't he doesn't look like a warlock. So, yeah, they, they all have very unique skill sets, and so it's fun to, to, to fight each of them. What about the new tools that players have in order to try to overcome this obstacle of the Chosen? Yes, so as you saw in the trailer, um, XCOM is not the only resistance movement on Earth. So in, in War of the Chosen, you have these three factions out there. And like the, yeah. like the Chosen, they all have distinct philosophies and distinct uh, fighting styles. But for the player to get access to those, first they have to win those factions over. They have to I recruit see. them to the XCOM cause. But when you do, you have access to the three the most powerful soldiers we've ever created. So and we're taking a look at the Reaper right now. What's the that, gameplay of the Reaper? That's right, the Reaper. So they are sort of uh, stealth marksmen and saboteurs. Uh, then we have the Skirmishers, which are actually defectors from the alien army. Oh, that makes sense with the art style. Yeah, right. yeah. Look at those fingers. Yeah, so they're... <laughs> half alien uh, human hybrids, and they're sort of like single soldier wrecking crews. They're really powerful. And then we have the Templars, and they're the most mysterious of the factions. They are psionic wildlings, and they work a little differently because they build up power over multiple attacks that yeah. they can then unleash in more devastating abilities. So it's sort of like a mini resource management mechanic specifically for the Templars. It definitely is. There's trade-offs there where as they gain focus, you either want to keep it because it makes them stronger, or mm -hmm. you can spend it on these really powerful abilities. Now, in the trailer, we got the chance to briefly look at the Lost. And though we didn't see them too right. much, I wanted to get the chance for you to talk about them a little more now. Who are they? Right. So the Lost, th this, this comes out of the idea that the original alien invasion happened 20 yeah. years ago. And in that invasion, the aliens destroyed some of the greatest cities of the world, and, and we've never been back. So in War of the Chosen, we go back. And what you find there are the lost, um, these handsome... I thought that everyone in the cities died, but apparently they're alive and well, they're yeah, doing fine. Yeah, as you can see, they've, they've weathered the last 20 years really well. So 
Um, yeah, these are heavily mutated humans, and, and a single loss is not going to pose much of a challenge. Sure. Um, but unfortunately, you don't fight single loss. They move in large swarms, and so when you go into the cities, mm -hmm. these swarms are drawn to the sound of combat, and they never stop ah. coming. And there is a silver lining, which is that the lost don't like aliens either. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so once the lost show up, then everybody's fighting for their lives. And I know that a big hallmark of the XCOM games is the sort of tactical maneuvers of the AI that, in the same way you're planning, it's planning right. too. But the lost behave quite differently. Yeah, they're mindless. So the idea is that you have this tactical combat going on against you versus the advent, the aliens, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this horde shows up and it, it throws everybody's plans out of whack. And then you can even have maps where there are chosen, lost, you're fighting the advent at the same time. <laughs> it makes for some very, very beautiful chaos. It's, it is definitely unlike any other XCOM uh, missions you've played. Well, Jake, you're the first guest out, so I'm going to ask you the big question. Okay. When do we get to play it? We get to play this. War of the Chosen comes out August 29th, so very soon. Just two soon. months. That's right, very soon on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. So people should follow XCOM on Twitter and Facebook if they want to keep up with all the latest XCOM information. And Jake didn't want to do this, but I'm going to make him do it. Follow Jake on Twitter. It's at Solomon Jake. Follow him, say hello, and tell him you're proud to be a follower. Yes, yes, please, please, thank you. I, <laughs> I don't like self-promotion. <laughs> I, uh, Don't worry, I got you covered. I, I at Jake Sean Solomon. For that. Thank you. It's at Jake Solomon. At Jake Solomon. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me today. Jake Solomon, creative director of XCOM 2. Thank you. Thanks. Now, as some of you may know, I am not the only host at this event. Joining me to do all sorts of announcement goodies is a woman named Sonia Reed, but you may know her a little better as OMG, it's Firefox. How's it going, Sonia? Hi. Thank you, Sean, and hello, you beautiful gamers. And whether you are checking us out online or you're hanging out with us here today, I am super excited to be here and show you guys some awesome games. And you know what? I'm not going to wait. We're just going to get right into it. I want to show you a game called Ooblets. It is going to be coming out early next year, and it is from an impressive studio of only two people called Glumberlands. So it's kind of a mashup between Harvest Moon meets Pokemon meets Adventure Time but even cuter, if you can imagine that. So I'm going to show you how to grow and customize your ooblets in this exclusive trailer. that trailer. Ooblet's trailer makes me oh so happy, and the previous one you just got the chance to see is the old school tabletop game Battletech, distilled into its purest form on PC, and here to talk about it from Harebrained Schemes is Jordan Wiseman and Mitch Gittleman. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you up on stage. Thank you very much. Woo! Uh, yes, that's woo! the spirit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of games based on Battletech. Tell us about this incarnation. 
by all means. Battletech is a modern, turn-based tactical game set within the Mech Warrior universe. And there's going to be three modes of play. Uh, a single-player skirmish, a multiplayer skirmish, and then our open-ended uh, mercenary campaign. Well, I want to hop straight into some of that single-player content by taking a journey to the Argo. I understand that, you know, there's all sorts of combat goodies that we're going to see in a moment, but the Argo is in between missions. Walk us through what we're right, seeing Right, so the Argo is a uh, broken-down hulk of a, space a spaceship from a bygone era, and it is your mercenary command center. You could take it all over the uh, all over space, uh, going from star system to star system, and taking uh, mercenary jobs from all sorts of different people, from uh, petty dictators all the way up to the great uh, lords and ladies of the noble houses. And uh, from there, you uh, can also command your entire mercenary crew. There's Samiri; mm -hmm. she's your navigator and you command her and all of your mech warriors as yeah. you take your jobs and upgrade your ship. I'm curious a little bit about the storyline in the single player. Sure, so you're gonna see in a few moments uh, Lady Kamea Arano, she's uh, a deposed ruler. Uh, her um, her uh, throne was taken by her uncle and you are going to uh, jump in and help her regain her throne. Of course. It's been plunged, the whole space has been plunged into a bloody civil war. And, and, these, and these, of course, are the tools of, of, of uh, negotiation and diplomacy <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> called battle mechs. Uh, and here in, in the mech bay, which is one of the, one of the key components of the Argo, you're able to customize uh, the mechs, adding different weapons, uh, changing out weapons and armor, heat sinks, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Yang here is, is uh, your master of ceremonies. He's uh, one of the key crew members because fixing these mechs after you come back from combat, you're a merc. You're, you're supposed to make right. money. Taking damage, you know, sets you behind. And so that, that's a really delicate balancing act. I can imagine that trying to get all the parts that you need for your ship can be a little difficult. Absolutely. That's why things like, uh, especially in this time and era uh, where parts are, are scarce, battlefield salvage is an important part of the game. Uh, and, and that also gets into, you know, like, when you take out, a, take out an enemy, try to leave the parts you want. Yeah, yeah. you want to hit them just hard enough to take them down. There's Lady uh, Kamea Arano there, and she's going to be the person you work for uh, during the campaign. But of course, when the campaign ends, uh, the single player story ends, you can still play the open-ended campaign, traveling around doing whatever you want. And there are the battle maps. Yes, yeah. now we're going to get a chance to look at the combat itself. You're coming down from the Argo. You're descending into battle. Walk me through what we're seeing. By all means. So, so uh, Battletech full 3D environment, and, and like a modern tactical game, uh, the environment counts, right? Line of, of sight, sensors, uh, cover, even though you're, you know, friggin' 30 foot tall, covered in armor, uh, hiding in a forest still helps. It soaks off damage. Uh, and so mm -hmm. all of those are kind of core components of any modern game, and especially facing, which is right. really important in this game. Facing really matters in Battletech. You know, uh, battle mechs aren't giant yeah. bags of hit points. Instead, they have 11 <laughs> different armor locations, there's internal structure, uh, they have uh, the internal components, these uh, critical slots filled with all sorts of uh, important pieces. So what you're trying to do is strip off the armor from one location and then keep your facing yeah. to try and penetrate it, get to the juicy bits. Yeah, I mean, I see this diagram at the top, it's reminiscent of the original tabletop yes, game, which indeed. I actually played as a kid, and I mean like... <laughs> as a kid, huh? Thanks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand the you know the same sort of idea where damaging the arm disables that weapon, but Absolutely. the mech can keep going. And you keep going at it, you blow that arm off, and they lose those weapons. Uh, and the and back is really juicy and tasty too. You you get around the back of a battle mech and <laughs> penetrate. <laughs> <laughs> I said that out. Uh, we're alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll allow well, it, we'll allow yeah, there it. There you go. What you just saw there is melee, um, one, of the, one of the things we're really excited about. I mean, mechs were not only yeah. weapon systems, they're giant, you know, armored suits. And so we're going up and, and being able to slug and kick and, and just, you know, even put a foot through a cockpit uh, or death from above, jump, uh, jump up and slam down on mechs. All that stuff is supported in this game. And and you really want to manage your heat, yeah. too. You're walking, you know, these mechs, uh, the pilots are sitting on a giant uh, nuclear reactor, basically. And so you really want to watch your heat, uh, how much uh, yeah, like this your, guy here is your different weapons do, because if you shut mm -hmm. down in combat, you are uh, quite vulnerable. It's been really fascinating to watch a lot of the streams because I know you guys just went into beta. Where can the people here go to sign up to play? Why, Sean, they can go to <laughs> BattletechGame.com. That's BattletechGame.com. Come yeah. find us on BattletechGame.com. And Thank if you're you. interested in a used mech, this is the guy to talk That's to. That's right. Now I'd like to state again, BattletechGame.com. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. Jordan, Mitch, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.
Now, our very next game you may recognize from PC Games Past. To talk about it, we got Sonya in the mezzanine. Thank you, Sean. Our next game is going to come to us from our friends at Tales World Entertainment, and they have been working on an awesome open-ended action medieval RPG game, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. We're going to check out the trailer for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Always a pleasure to have Mountain Blade 2 here at the PC Gaming Show. Now, I know we've just gotten started and we've seen XCOM and Ooblets and Battletech. We would love to hear your thoughts. Use hashtag PC Gaming Show. Let us know what you think. We'll even put some of the tweets up here live. Not all of the tweets, because that would be a disaster. Some of you on Twitter really need to pull it together. But either way, we'd be thrilled to hear your thoughts. And coming up next, we have the sequel to Total War Warhammer 1. It's Total War Warhammer 2. I'm joined by Al Bickham from Creative Assembly. How you doing? How's it going, Al? Yeah, really good. Good to be here. So tell me, what is it that's been going on since your announcement a few months ago? Quite a lot, really. I mean, this is the, we're, we're working on the, the second game in our trilogy. Um, it's going to be every bit as big as the first game, but we're layering on. We we're sort of doubling down on all the stuff that made the first game so fun, which is real diversification between the factions and a whole range of, a whole range of new kind of gameplay extras in the campaign game as well. So four new factions set across four oh, new continents. there's four and a new, new factions, is there? Yep, yep, four new factions, yep. yep. I We've thought there the were two big ones we were talking about. No, well, we're focusing on the High Elves and the Lizard Men at the moment. Yeah. Um, but there's the Dark Elves as well and another fourth race, which we have yet to announce. Oh, you tease. I know, terrible, isn't it? Well, Al, talk to us a little bit about the High Elves and the Lizard Men. Right, so... So they're both essentially working towards the same goal in the campaign game, which yes. is to heal the Great Vortex, which is a, a sort of unique feature of the campaign map, which ties the whole narrative of the game together. Right. But even, even those in the Warhammer world with the, same, with the same aims will inevitably come to blows at some point. So that's what, we're, um, that's what we'll be showing today. And we're going to be looking at what is called a quest battle between the High Elves and the Lizard Men. Walk us through a little bit of what we're about to see. OK, so this is, um, we're about to show some footage from a quest battle for Krokgar, who's one of the legendary lords for the Lizard Men, and this is one of his quest battles, and it's the battle for the Fallen Gates. So you'll see the master Lizard Man forces trying to oust yeah. the High Elves as they as they try and they're sort of meddling in an ancient power, power site of the um, of the Lizard Men. Well, I'm very excited to take a look. It's going to be some in-game footage from the Battle of the Fallen Gates.
September 28th, Al. That's yep. That is the first time I think we've got the chance to see that official release date. Yep, we're announcing that today. We're officially out on the 28th of September. So we're available for pre-orders now. We've got a, um, an early adopter bonus, which is a really significant um, sort of bunch of new content for Warhammer 1. It's a new, a new uh, awesome. race pack, in fact. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, and we're out this year. Well, I want to take a step back, and I want to have you talk a little bit about what it was that we just saw in the Battle of the Fallen Gates. Right, so as I mentioned, this is a quest battle, and this is the Lizardmen versus the High Elves. Um, right. And this is what we've got playable here at E3 this week. Um, so you'll be able to take control of the Lizardmen in that battle and, and experience that immense diversity and all the crazy stuff that's going on in their army because they're, they're essentially an army of ancient space-faring dinosaurs. Uh, and they, you know, small dinosaurs that ride big dinosaurs with Aztec space lasers. And it's, you know, it's, it's playing with Warhammer. It's just dinosaurs all the way down. All the way, all the way, all the way up and all the way down, yeah. So, and, and Warhammer lets, you know, gives us these toys to play with, to make right. the game with. It's awesome. Well, backing out of the battle, I know that the campaign map in Total War Warhammer was a big hit. What's going on with the campaign level in Warhammer 2? So in Warhammer 2, we've got a ton of new campaign features which lead you to kind of explore and discover and gain new abilities and that kind of stuff. And it's all based around um, a sort of overarching narrative, so all the races are in our intention right until the end. Um, but we're also, shortly after launch, we're also releasing a, a free update for the game which will bring the combined campaign map into play, which is the, the, the land mass from Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2 together in a gigantic campaign map where you can play any That's of the races awesome. that you own from both games, yeah. Well, I understand you have presence here at E3, not just in this uh -huh. show, but also on the floor. What are players going to get the chance to play there? Yep, so they can play the Battle of the Fallen Gates. We've got two difficulty yeah. modes, so a kind of starter difficulty mode and a, and a veteran's right. difficulty mode. And they'll also get to see, um, we're also rolling, when, when you play it, you'll, you'll see the actual campaign map as well. We've put a video together that details loads of the new features in the campaign map, so you can actually see that in action as well. So if you get a chance, go play. It's really good fun. Well, Al, I want to thank you for coming out and talking to us today My about pleasure. Total War Warhammer 2. Once again, feel free to check it out on the E3 floor, or if you're at home, there'll be tons of footage and updates about the Battle of the Fallen Gates. Now, our next game is in the card game genre, a genre where no matter how hard I try, I wind up playing bad decks and having fun. Here to talk about the upcoming expansion for Shadowverse is Kriparian. Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to talk to you guys about Shadowverse. Shadowverse is one of the best card games out there because it basically just does everything right. Every time I log into Shadowverse, I have an amazing experience. I can play whatever deck type, whatever deck, whatever cards, anything I want to do. And of course, every time there's new cards added to the game, this whole thing gets forwarded and really the game gets so much richer. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the worldwide debut of the Wonderland Dreams trailer. I have a book for thee like no other. Each page a window to a long lost land where fairy tales dovetail with myths and wishes give birth to legends grand. Knights and dragons, or wistful love. Within this book, all ambitions bloom. But be warned, my fickle friend. A dark abyss awaits us all. For blood-pricked roses wishes be. But fear not to bite life's fruit, for in this land, courage is key. With bated breath, the door sweeps open, glory bound or purged in flame. The hand you choose defines your fate. So I ask you, is this really just a game? Thank you, Psy Games, and thank you, Crip. As you know, technology is an extremely important component to games, especially with the ever-increasing power of hardware and with new demands coming from VR. Here to talk a little bit about tech in games is the leader of the software development group at Intel. It's Doug Fisher. Doug, come on out. 
How you doing, Sean? Hey, thanks for joining us, Doug. It's great to be here. I want to thank you, Doug, for coming out, and of course, thanks to Intel for sponsoring this event. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Yeah. And since Doug has a whole bunch of exciting stuff to say, I'm going to give the stage to Doug. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, good morning, everyone. I am very excited to be here. And I'm very excited to talk to the PC gaming community about all the announcements we made this morning from Intel. I'm a software guy, you are the gamers. All these announcements are very relevant to everything we do. You know, 2016 was an amazing year by all measures in gaming. Look at the number of live streams in Twitch, over 2 million new live streams, over 300 million esports enthusiasts, and look at the growth in VR. 2017 is going to be even more amazing. And why? Because of you. It's because of you in this room, the PC gamers. It's because of you on the broadcast. You are the ones that bring the innovation that we create. You drive us to innovate. You were on the edge of technology all the time with you. You have that instinct on what the new capabilities are that we need to deliver. And then you have this amazing, inclusive, and social environment. Young, old, male, female, tech, non-tech. Millions of people getting together, inspiring each other to immerse themselves in this environment. Now, it starts at Intel with amazing hardware technology. We've talked about the launch we had two weeks ago of our X-Series platforms. Now, you gaming enthusiasts will love the Core i7X overclocking capability. It's an amazing system. And you megatasters who want to game, create, stream, will love the beast of them all, the Core i9 Extreme Edition, an amazing system for this environment. Now, as a software person, I love this environment. I love this hardware. Because why? It gives software people less time waiting, more time creating, creating that amazing content. I work with over a million gaming developers to ensure they take full advantage of all that innovation we put on our platforms. Whether it's working on the caching algorithms or the high density graphics, or multi-core, it doesn't matter, all the different areas, the best known methods, we ensure these millions of developers are making the most out of that platform, delivering the best content. Then we work to market that so that all the gamers out here, the billions of gamers, know the new compelling content that's available. And this is just an example of some of the titles we work with. I'm sure you recognize a lot of these titles. These are just a few examples, whether it's Halo Wars 2 or Overwatch, or in the VR space, where it's Arizona Sunshine or The Unspoken. We're working with all these content providers to ensure they take full advantage of all those new capabilities. How many people have heard of Destiny? Yeah. I couldn't be more excited to tell you that we work with Bungie and Activision to bring Destiny 2 to the PC. That, yes, yes, we're bringing it to the PC, yes, bring it up. That experience is absolutely amazing. And I can't think of a better person to talk about how amazing that experience is than the full-time live Twitch streamer and YouTube broadcaster, welcome on stage, Tefty Teft. Hey, Tefty. Hey, Doug. How you doing? Good. Great to see you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. So you really do live, eat, breathe, sleep, dream Destiny. I do. I play a lot of Destiny. I've got thousands of hours, uh, hundreds of raids completions. I, I, I've built my community around Destiny on Twitch, and uh, I'm a co-host for, uh, one of the founding co-hosts of Destiny Community Podcast, one of the biggest podcasts specifically for Destiny, so I, I know a lot about Destiny and I play a lot of it. That's great, and so when you play it, have you experienced it on the PC yet? I have, yeah, I got to play it at the event. I gotta say, the, the PC experience is amazing. As, uh, as somebody who's played a lot of hours in Destiny, everybody knows how is it gonna transfer, how is the, the experience gonna go from console to, to PC, are they gonna actually be able to deliver, and I can say 100%, 100% sure that the PC experience is incredible. When I got to play it, I was blown away. I popped Don Blade, used a mouse and keyboard, and rain and fire from above. It was amazing. You guys, if you're a fan of Destiny, you're going to love Destiny 2. That's awesome. Yeah. So, 
Is anybody else here going to be able to participate and play with this? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's going to be on the it's uh, it's going to be on the show floor. The other thing too is they've got tons of PC support as well that's being added to it. So 4K is going to be beautiful looking. It's got 21.9 ratio, uncapped frame rates. I mean, for me personally, I'm going to be looking at pushing 144 or higher for FPS because oh, <laughs> it's going to be so nice. And yes, absolutely. On top of that, uh, Bungie has told me something specific that is exciting for the uh, the high CPU core count chips. They are optimizing the engine, so it will take advantage of all the cores in your CPU. So if you do have an i9 Extreme, which hey, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe hook me up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you have an i9 Extreme, it will be able to take advantage of all those cores. So that is uh, that's great. As an enthusiast, PC enthusiast myself, I'm very excited about that potential for Destiny 2. I can't wait to run it out maxed with as many frames as possible. Well, fantastic. You guys all have a chance to take a look at it. Maybe you and I can uh, play later today. That'd be great. All yeah. right. It's, it's going to be on the uh, E3 show floor. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Shafti. you. Appreciate right. it, Doug. Big hand. <laughs> I love that. That experience. Mm, nothing says it like that, right? All right. So it's not just about the top eight list titles, but also it's about the broad set of developers we participate with. The independent developers. You can see examples of properties that they've developed. We want to make sure everybody's developing and creating content on the PC to create more and more opportunity to participate in that. We're inspiring these developers through a contest called Level Up. Take a look at the sponsors between Intel, you got uh, Green Man Gaming, Epic, and Razer sponsoring this event. We have real luminaries judging, like Tim Schafer. The, yes, Tim Schaefer is going to be judging this contest. The winner will be announced at PAX West in Seattle in September. I encourage you to participate. It's a great event. It's a great opportunity for independent developers to get involved and participate. And why do we care? As a software guy, why do we care? Because we want more and more content out there. We want more opportunities for games for others to participate. We want to discover the next big thing on the PC. We don't know where it's going to come from. So we want lots of people participating on our platform so that the next big thing is built on top of the PC. And you, everybody here, all you gamers, you can participate as well. I'm certain as you're participating in a game, you've thought of something new, unique that you'd like to bring to reality. This is your opportunity to be one of those developers as well, or at least influence one of those developers and create that amazing immersive experience whether you're a gamer, content creator, or even eSports. Now, speaking of eSports, we had two exciting announcements today in the eSports arena, pun intended, <laughs> with ESL. The first being, we have a landmark deal with ESL. Intel is now the global technology provider for eSports for ESL. That's great news for everybody in the gaming community because the latest technology we use for the events for the studios, the back-end operations, and the streaming capabilities during the event, you'll have the latest technology at those events. Now, the thing I love about sports, and I'm a traditional sports admirer as well, is they have this tradition around these things called a grand slam, whether it's tennis, golf, rugby. They have a grand slam. And there's no reason we can't have that in eSports. And that's why we're excited with Oculus, ESL, and Intel are sponsoring the Grand Slam event, Intel Grand Slam. And all these leagues getting together, and the first team to win four of the 10 events will be the Grand Slam winner. They'll collect their traditional prize, but in addition, they'll get another $1 million bonus for being the Grand Slam winner. One, mi one million dollars. All right. I was so excited about the announcement today around Echo Arena. They've taken this property and now are making it VR multiplayer. Do you guys see that announcement today? That is so great. They're creating the multiplayer VR experience and bringing it to life in this platform. We're so excited about it at Intel and we want so many people to start participating with it. We are sponsoring a deal in conjunction with Oculus to make this available with Oculus 
free of charge for a limited time at launch. So all of you can play with this game free of charge starting July 20th. And you now can participate, learn, and become an expert in VR gaming. Now I know when you become an expert, what do you want to do? You want to showcase those skills. Wouldn't it be awesome if you had an opportunity to showcase those skills? That's why we're super excited to work together to create the VR challenge. With Intel, Oculus, and ESL, we're creating the VR challenge. It's a virtual challenge in the VR arena. And everybody's going to compete, and the end of it's going to be in Poland at the Intel Extreme Masters, where the finals will be in 2018. Book your tickets now. It's going to be a crazy event. Now, I know everybody likes a challenge. Everybody's excited about challenges. I'm going to give you a challenge all here today. Just participate in at, game, at Intel Gaming. Follow at Intel Gaming, and you'll have a chance by participating there to win one of three great prizes, one from Oculus, one from Asus, and one from iBuyPower. You'll have a chance to win one of these prizes just by participating in this challenge. And don't dismay, all those will have Core i7 in the systems. So it's a great opportunity to play, participate, and bring up that challenge. So the future is here now, the future of gaming. You can just feel it growing and growing. You see the immersive capabilities. And why is that happening? Because we have amazing Intel hardware. As a software person, that helps me participate in creating amazing and compelling content and those new immersive experiences we all want to have. So the realm of possibilities are here now. An example of that is VR. So I'm stepping away now. I'm going to go up and look at uh, the Echo platform, Echo Arena, and see how it goes, and I'll be back in a minute. So, Sean? Thank you, Doug. It was a pleasure to have you. Thanks for all the great announcements. And, of course, thanks again to Intel for sponsoring this event. Keep in mind, if you look at the time, we're not even halfway done yet. We have all sorts of games still yet to be announced. So let's go ahead and look at what's to come. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Coming up, Brendan Green joins us to talk about the future of his smash hit, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and a new game from Clay Entertainment. Back to you, Sean. No, it should be this one. It's time to take a look at an upcoming game up in the mezzanine with Sonya. How's it going, Sonya? Thank you, Sean. So as a Firefox, this is a game that pulls on my heartstrings and does not let go, and I just want to hear more about it. And luckily, I've got the perfect person to talk to today. I am joined by Felix Kramer the, on the game formerly known as uh, Secret Legend, but you've got some special announcements. I saw some secretive tweets from the Dicey Twitter account. You did. Do you definitely. want to talk about that? Well, you're exactly right. We were known as Secret Legend, but today we're announcing our new name, Tunic. So you can head to tunicgame.com to find out more about that. And we're announcing that we're pairing with publisher Finji, who you may know from their incredible work on Night in the Woods and Overland. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I want to tell you, it wasn't just the fox that sold me on this game. I love the beautiful, charming graphics. And honestly, I just want to see more of it. Can we check out the trailer? Let's do it. Thank you, Sonia. Now, our next title that we'll be talking about is 
honestly a huge surprise hit, having just surpassed three million sales, you may recognize it, as one of the three most played and broadcasted games on Twitch right now. It's Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and I'm literally next to Player Unknown right now. Brendan Green, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I gotta say, it has been amazing to see the runaway success of your game. What's it been like for you? Oh, it's been immense. I mean, really, the reaction we've got from players and content creators has been tremendous. And I want to say thank you to everyone for that. Uh, it's been great. And thank you for the experiences, both of the joy of winning and the, well, I guess the joy of a bullet flying through my head out of nowhere, and I'll yeah. never know why. You've got to learn to love the salt. Love it. <laughs> Well, I understand that even though a lot of people uh, treat the game almost as a full release right now, yeah. it's still technically not released yet, and there's a whole lot more to come. Talk to us a little bit about what's in store. So we have, uh, we're, our focus at the moment is to sort of stabilize the game, get the servers up to spec, but also we have, uh, you know, 2D, 3D replays planned for in-game replays. Uh, we have new weapons coming every month. Uh, oh. <laughs> So yeah, no, but our current focus is really just get the game competitive and stable. So suddenly fences are no longer the most impossible object in the game. You can right. climb over them. Yeah, now. yeah. So our content program, programmer, Marek, he's done a really great job getting this system to be dynamic. So it doesn't matter what object you're in front of, you'll jump oh, or really? vault over it. Yeah, yeah so yeah. in terms of jumping and vaulting, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vaulting. Is it, is it sort of, when you say that it's dynamic, does this mean that the taller the obstacle, the more difficult it is to climb over? Yeah, exactly, and it has it? different animations for each different thing, so vaulting, climbing. Now, oh. we also have weather, so. One of my favorite aspects, of course, is the rain map in the game. Walk me through what we're seeing here. So this is our new weather settings. This is fog. You just saw a clear day. Um, our rain has been tweaked a little bit as well. And we also have our sunset coming in. So this really, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's, That's it's beautiful. quite beautiful. Yeah. And what, what is the impact on gameplay of these types of things with weather? It just changed dynamic. Oh, so this is... Oh, a new gun. Yes. This is the OTS uh, Groza. It's a 7.62 bullpup, super powerful, crate only. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a beast. Is it, is it a short range, long range? Where's medium to medium, Short to medium, it's going to be a beast. It's going to be super powerful. Yeah. And then long range, it'll work as well. And I remember before you came on the show, I, I asked, well, why did you put that gun in? And I think your answer was... It just looks cool. It it's, looks cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like we wanted to add a bullpup and we wanted to add something else to the 7.62 class. And this is a Spetsnaz weapon. It's, yeah, it just looks great. It looks cool. A good as reason as any, honestly. I want to come back to the weather effects. Obviously, they look beautiful. What are some of the impacts that you've seen on the gameplay with the new weather effects? Well, it's just going to change the way you play. So it's not necessarily yeah. going to be, you're going to be sniping all the time. You know, with the foggy weather, you're going to have to choose a more kind of CVQ type uh, play style. But it's just, again, to give you a bit of variety and make every game kind of different. You've talked a little bit about what we've seen in the video, but talk to me about long term. What's far down the line for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? So, again, uh, we want to finish out the, the, the platform and make it a good platform for all kind right. of game modes. You know, we will have modding down the line as well. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, again, it's just creating a stable platform. That's our yeah. aim here. I understand that you're also working on new maps. Yeah, so we have two new maps coming, uh, one based in Peru, a desert map with uh, sort of ruined cities, uh, with sandstorms and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, and then this other one in the Adriatic, so it has even a, a ruined cosmodrome in the center of the map with like snowfall, and it's, yeah, it's, I'm excited. That's awesome. Yeah. And I know that you've been super involved with the community of regular players. What's in store for those people playing the game right now? So as I said, we have our custom games. Um, we have the 3D replays, which I'm really excited about because it allows you to watch your match back in the engine with a free cam and slow motion and stuff which like that. Which is great so for content creators. Exactly, yeah. right? So you can content just... Content creators, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, yeah. <laughs> it'll just give you a new way to create like machinimas and stuff like that within the game. Yeah. And the last thing I want to bring up, because you were mentioning this a lot before you came on, you have all sorts of stability and performance fixes incoming. Yeah, so like our focus this month is on our server performance and really getting that stable because at the moment the servers aren't performing the best they could. Uh, but, you know, so <laughs> last month our team's focus was on client performance and we improved that yeah. broadly for a lot of people. And this month it's on server. So they've already found a lot of things to, to fix and I'm excited. That's great. I'm sure players will completely stop blaming anything on the game at that point. Right. They uh, will accept responsibility <laughs> for those losses then. <laughs> Well, to player unknown himself, Brendan, thank you so much for coming out thank to you talk so much, about Jeff. it. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everyone.
As we get ourselves set up for the, no the next game, we're going to head to the mezzanine with Sonia for a little bit of a giveaway. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Sean is pretty cool, right? Uh, but you know what's a little bit cooler? A free PC. We're going to be giving away a badass PC from our friends at Intel. This bad boy is going to be rocking an i7 7700K processor. There's a lot of 7s in there, and it's going to be running a NVIDIA GTX 1080. It is worth more than $2,500, so if you want a chance to win, head over to PCGamingShow.com slash giveaway and put in your information. Good luck, and back to you, Sean. Thank you, Sonia. And I am pretty cool, right? Jesus, thanks, audience. <laughs> Woo! I didn't realize you could pinpoint the exact time and date a career died. But we still have all sorts of great stuff in store for you. Our next guest you may recognize from PC gaming shows past. Tripwire Interactive is back with a slew of games to talk about. And I'm joined by creative director Bill Monk. Pleasure to have you, Bill. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Good to have you back. Thank you, thank you. As always. All right. You guys have been busy. Congratulations on the recent release of Rising Storm 2. Yeah, absolutely. It's a realism FPS. We just released it two weeks ago, and the fan reaction's been really positive. Really happy about that. And we want to thank everyone who was part of the beta phases that helped shape the game in a real positive way. And uh, be sure to check out the Trello boards, see what we're up to. And we're actually uh, already really busy working on some new content. So stay tuned. That's amazing. I mean, I know so many people know you from Killing Floor 2, but especially this year, there's so much to talk about. I mean, yep. last year you announced Killing Floor, Incursion, the VR Killing Floor. How's that been going? Oh, that's been going awesome. You know, uh, Incursion's one of the uh, second phase, uh, you know, game, or second wave games uh, to come out for VR, and we've learned a lot. And we're really, really excited. We think we have uh, one of the best uh, products that's going to come out later this year. It's scary as hell. Uh, you can God, play it yeah, uh, I I single it. player in uh, co-op, <laughs> and uh, we're really excited to release it. So stay tuned on that. That's awesome. Now, the big thing I know you wanted to talk about today was a little bit of content coming down the line for your big game, Killing Floor 2. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we released uh, Killing Floor 1, one of the things that really put us on the map was our time uh, seasonal events. Right, right. And when we released Killing Floor 2, people were always clamoring and asking, you know, well, when are you guys going to do that for Killing Floor 2? Reasonable enough. Well, we're super happy to announce the Summer Sideshow coming out this year. Well, I'm eager to show everyone this footage. This trailer makes me laugh every time. Let's go ahead and take a look at Killing Floor 2's Summer Sideshow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tragic Kingdom Amusement Park. Come on down and play Find Mini Dookie, Feed the Pound, Dunk the Float, and Pop the... What? Was that a real head? Trade for festive clown makeup, colorful hats, and dozens of other items. Carnival rewards are only available for a limited time. See the adorable pinhead and marvel at the mighty strong pound. Oh, what is wrong with him? Hear the bearded beauty, the siren from Fiji. I think I'm gonna be sick. Back by popular demand. Come see Pukey the Clown and the Monkey Man. Why does the monkey have a chainsaw? Find romance in the tunnel of love. Swing on the queen of chains. Look at them. Ow! Scream on Pound Mountain! Oh, but that's not safe! See the death-defying fire stunts of Dr. Infernum's pyrotechnic emporium! Oh, is he actually on fire? Why is that person on fire? Earn new achievements and try out the new HD-12 shotgun and tactical lever-action rifle! Why do you need a shotgun at a carnival? I don't care, it's unlockable! Why does the carnival cleanup crew need hazmat suits? No, no, I'm done. This is a horror show. I'm getting out of here. If you can hear this, run! Warning, news and outbreaks and variants and behavior detected. Be alert for new challenges, modes, and threats in the weekly outbreaks. I mean, I know it's a horror theme, but there's some great humor in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, seasonal events are definitely the most fun to work on. I mean, it's yeah. just, we can just go crazy and we go goofy. You know, we got clowns. You got the monkey clowns, that bangs the cymbal with a chainsaw instead. Midgets on stilts. Bearded <laughs> ladies. You know, we got it all. 
Tell me a little bit about what is the gameplay? What's some of the stuff that people can experience in the summer sideshow? So it's a limited time event. It's only going right. to last for one month. Uh, so all this crazy stuff you're seeing here, it's one month. Yep. Uh, and there's uh, over 50 cosmetic items that people can gain from playing it totally free. Uh, all the Zeds have been replaced. All the voices have been redone. Uh, we also have uh, mini games that are, you know, thrown out throughout the Yeah, map. I saw the carnival games right at the start of the trailer. Yep. We've also got two new weapons that we're introducing. And uh, we also have this other mode that we're really excited about. It's the weekly outbreak Yeah, I saw mode. the weekly outbreak at the end of the trailer. What's the weekly outbreak about? So uh, each week, a uh, new gameplay mode comes out with uh -huh. new challenges for the player. Uh, we have one, it's starting out with a Cranium Cracker, and that's a headshot only mode. And so then no have, damage unless it's headshot. Yeah, exactly. And then we have another one called Tiny Terror, where every time you shoot a Zed, they actually shrink. They become like little like midget Zeds, which is really crazy. And whenever the players <laughs> get hit, they shrink too. Oh, really? So, I mean, that's just two of them. We have eight total, and it's over two months worth of uh, content. And if they're really hard to beat, but if you beat it, you get really cool, like, precious items and stuff like that. So, of course, I have to ask, when can people play it? Uh, actually, you can play it tomorrow. And it's uh, free on Steam all week. Easy. Oh. <laughs> so you got no excuse not to try it. <laughs> well, I mean, what if people are here at E3? Oh, well, they can, yeah, they can play here too. Oh, boy, that yeah, was tomorrow. a setup on my part. <laughs> right. Yeah, where, whereabouts is it at on the E3 floor? Uh, that's at the PC Gamer Show. Oh, that's booth, right. It's yep. at the PC Gaming Show booth. We have our own booth here at E3. Yes. Oh, I'm glad that two of you are yep. very excited to hear that. The, the first of many, right? This is going to yes. become a tradition. Indubitably. Yeah. I'm not in charge of the buzz, so yes, yes, of course. Well, I want to say, Bill, thank you so much for coming out. Congrats Absolutely. on all the projects and the progress. Bill Monk from Tripwire Thanks, Interactive. Ben. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Let's head back up to the mezzanine for a little bit of social with Sonia. This year's PC gaming show is being broadcast on more platforms than ever before. We are on Steam, we are on Facebook and Twitch and Mixer. We are all over the place. This is awesome. And guys, if you're on Mixer, you got to sweet talk the to sweet talk the mods a little bit. Be kind of nice to them because they're going to be giving away games throughout the entire show. Unfortunately, no free games for day nine. Uh, but uh, sorry. Back to you, Sean. I'll happily buy them. Yay, video games! Now, if any of you got the chance to see the conferences leading up to today, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. In particular, Microsoft has had a whole slew of games people are pumped for, including some that are going to be at this show, starting with the first ever incarnation of Forza Motorsport coming straight to PC. It's Forza Motorsport 7. Joining me to talk about it is the creative director of Forza Motorsport from Turn 10, Bill Giese. Come here, Bill. How's it going? Yeah, Bill, congratulations. Thank you. The announcement yesterday must have been really exciting for you guys. Huge announcements. Uh, we revealed a car to the world. Uh, Not an in-game car, a no, car. No, an actual car. That's normally saved for car shows like Geneva and, and Paris. Yeah. We revealed a car here at E3, the Porsche 911 GT2 RS, to the world yesterday. It was awesome. You know, I've gotten the chance to play the previous Forza Motorsport games, and they always struck me as a racing game not focused on being cartoonish or you know, strapping guns to the car. It's about hyper-realistic racing. Uh, Forza Motorsport is about precision, it's about competition, and we've rebuilt Forza Motorsport 7 from the ground up mm -hmm. to really recreate that feeling of driving a car at peak. Uh, the cars, we have over 700 cars. Every single one of them, they're going to rattle and shake. It's going to scare the crap out of you. What are some of the things that you've done to bring that experience to PC? Well, going to PC has been awesome. Uh, not only will it have uh, mouse and keyboard support, but with multi-USB, we have every fan-requested wheel on the market. Um, and it's been exciting for the team. That's a lot of USB a lot devices. Of wheels, let me tell you, and we've been testing that. Last week alone, we, we brought in any USB device we had, and we played on a Guitar Hero guitar and a, a DDR <laughs> pad. <laughs> Now, you're not going to do that, obviously. That's but not how that's real not racing racers works. Do it. That's not the hyper-realistic part. But uh, whatever you have in your closet, plug it in, you're ready to go. Now, what about for low-end PCs? There's obviously a lot of people who are on budget devices. I mean, what about for them? What's the optimization been like? Well, it's been great. Going to the high end of 4K, unlock frame rate, 21 by 9. But we've yeah. also lowered our min spec as well to include i5. And no matter where you play, it looks and plays great. And speaking of looking and playing great, you're here at E3, and I understand you have some out-of-control rigs that people can actually play the games on. Absolutely. Come by the show. We've got two hydraulic rigs, 
uh, in 4K on Ultra 4K Hydraulic PCs. Hydraulic rigs? You didn't yeah. tell me that. <laughs> yeah, bring a vomit bag uh, and come on and check it out. It looks awesome. Well, awesome. Bill, thanks so much Thank for you. sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm incredibly excited of all the stuff Microsoft's doing. You just got the chance to look at Forza. And now coming onto the stage, I am replacing Bill with Ted Timmons. He's the PC design lead at Rare to talk about Sea of Thieves. Come on out, Ted. Hi, Ashil. Ted Timmons. Thanks for having me. Welcome. It's a pleasure. So, Ted, talk to me a little bit about what is Sea of Thieves. Yeah, so we feel like we've made the pirate game you've always wanted. When you think about sailing around the open seas, you and your crew of, uh, of crewmates, uh, basically it's Pirates of the Caribbean meets meet, meet the Goonies. What are some of the things that you're showcasing here at E3 in the game? Yeah, so for anyone who didn't see the briefing yesterday, uh, we showed off great new features like riddle map storms and firing yourself out of cannons. <laughs> a common pirate pastime. Yeah, pretty known. <laughs> now, I had to ask the same question to Forza yeah. Motorsport. What are yeah. some of the things, some of the features that you've added in to focus on the PC experience? Yeah, so we've got things like 4K, unlocked frame rates, or everything you expect. But we've also bought our gameplay footage in 21 by 9 as well, my personal favorite. Your, oh, your favorite resolution, yeah, like yeah, yeah. The, one of the top three favorite resolutions Yeah, it's probably there with 32 by 9 and 16 by 9 as well, probably. <laughs> So tell me a little bit more about the PC version. Obviously, it's probably a challenge to try to develop for two different devices at once. Yeah, so we decided to change our approach to the game. We're actually building yeah. both versions in parallel because we felt that's how we deliver the same game on the same day. So it's not a port from one device to the other. Correct, yeah. We, we felt it was really important just to build them together from, from the very beginning. Just one single code path. One single code path, yeah. Awesome. Well, I know a whole lot of people here are curious to get their chance to play it. Is there an official release date or an opportunity for them to play it? Yeah, so we're coming to both platforms in early 2018, but right mm -hmm. now we have a technical alpha. You're welcome to come sign up. We have thousands of PC players playing already. So, yeah, come join us, seeathieves.com. Once again, Ted Timmons. Awesome, thank you very much. Rare. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Seeofthieves.com. Now, this next title is one I'm personally very, very excited about, given the fact that when I took one look at the trailer, the striking visual style just grabbed me. It's an evolution of cyberpunk, a game called The Last Night. Here to talk about it is the creative director at Odd Tales. Join me in welcoming Tim Sore. Hello, Pleasure, Tim. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Let's ask the obvious question, what is The Last Night? The Last Night is what we call a cinematic platformer, which means it's not a game like Mario where you have to jump from platform to platform, yeah. but you know, it's more story-driven, it's more reminiscent of old classics like Another World, Flashback, Oddworld even. Oddworld, I was going to say, it reminded me quite a bit about it, and I saw that you guys had the big announcement reveal at Microsoft yesterday. I mean, that trailer was such a hit, it blew up. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, we are obviously super happy with the trailer reception, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, now, of course, I have some concerns I want to address. Um, you know, I am embarrassed by some tweets I made in the past. Um, I want to apologize for those. Uh, they do not in any way represent who I am today or what The Last Night will be about. Well, let's talk about what the game is about. I know that the setting of The Last Night is super important to the character of the game. Tell me, where yeah. are we right now? I want you to imagine a world where machines are surpassing us in every possible way, you know? Right. So not only physically, but also intellectually, emotionally, even creatively. So in a sense, like, any job that you could possibly imagine, an AI does better. Absolutely. Including yeah. being a host for a PC gaming show. Including that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine, thank you, this one person who was also excited about the booth. Now, um, in terms of this world, this must give a kind of sense of existential crisis to all the inhabitants. Yeah, um, like, the way I can... Like, wh what yeah. is it like to be a person in this world? So, you know, in a world where you're not valuable anymore in production, yeah. um, the only thing you can really do is to consume endlessly, right? right. So, what you're trying to, to, to see with this game is how do you define yourself, you know, when you don't have anything to create or to strive for. Yeah, and I can see, you know, obviously there's the futuristic lighting and the visuals, but there's also that sort of drab, dreary tone. This art style is amazing. I mean, all of these assets are in 2D, but it has so many modern effects. How did you even think of this? So it all comes down to my background in VFX and uh, advertising, basically. So I wanted to you know, uh, explore what I could do with 2D and pixel art yeah. and just augment that and enrich it with like 
modern techniques of lighting and compositing. Right. You know, and we've talked a little bit about where we are, about the art style. Who are you? Who do you play as in The Last Night? Yeah, so the character you get to play is a young uh, idealist, I would say. Yeah. And because of a childhood accident, he cannot enjoy the same gamified, augmented life than everybody else. Right. So uh, because of that, you know, he wants to change the world. And on you want to have way, like an impact and a meaning. Uh, absolutely. So on his way to do that, he's going to meet some questionable, questionable characters you have to trust or not on your way. What about the gameplay? What are the things that, if I'm the player, what do I do in the last night? So we took inspiration from some classic genre like point and click and adventure games. Yeah. But so you get um, you know to solve puzzles and uh, dialogues, of course. But we added a real-time component to it. Real time in, in what sort of sense? What makes it a real time puzzle? So it means that you know while you are busy um, breaking in an apartment, for instance, all the <laughs> simulation is still happening around you. So police come around, you know, and you have to be careful about that. So in a sense, like if I tried to break into the apartment at night, the police might be on patrol at that time. But if I came in the morning, there might be no police. Yes. But the resident might be home. Absolutely, yeah. So um, that means that you know. If you see the police coming around the corner, you better, you know, just hide, uh, pretend to be a hobo, or maybe draw your gun. You also mentioned that the structure of the game is in one night after the other. What's that like? Yeah, so the game is structured around several nights. So, you know, it spans on several nights, and they are all interconnected, which means that what you see. tell people uh, on the very first night, you know, and what you do also is all remember. So if I'm so. just in a conversation, just walk away in the middle of it? Yeah, they will remember it. They'll remember, like two days later, yeah, they'll absolutely. be angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fast. That must add a huge amount of replayability since the world is just changing based yeah, upon Yeah, we're your taking inputs. a lot of pleasure yeah, to hide a lot of stuff in the city, and we hope the community will have fun to figure out and get that out uh, collectively. So, yeah. Well, again, I love the art style. I love these story driven adventure games. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, Sean. I'm Thank looking you. forward to it. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Once again, that's oddtales.net for more information about The Last Night. Now, this next game surprised me, I'm sure it will surprise you, because of its style. It's from the makers of Arma, the realistic military simulator, and DayZ, the zombie survival game. This one has a much more playful tone, though. Let's look at the next title from Bohemia Interactive. It was the mother of all storms. But somehow I just knew everything was gonna be... Well, being stranded on a desert island is a lot of fun. You get to meet new friends. You get in shape. And you learn how to craft. And because it's your land, it won't take long before you call that place... ...a home. And that's just the beginning, because here, you can do anything. Explore your creativity. Visit us at islands.com. Here to join me to talk about Islands is the creative director from Bohemia Interactive. It's Alish Ulm. Welcome, Alish. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. What kind of game is Islands? Okay, so Islands is a sandbox game about mm. uh, survival and exploration, but at the same time, in Islands, you can create your own games, your own adventures, just like the ones we've shown in the video. Yeah. Actually, Islands stands for your lens, lens that you create where you make the rules. And it, it's almost like a, a sandbox game, not where you're necessarily building a structure, but you're trying to build an experience. Yes, exactly. 
And I have to ask, given the fact that the style of it contrasts so sharply with Arma and Daisy, what is it about Islands that still makes it a Bohemia game? Yeah, we, we get uh, this a lot, but actually beneath the surface, there are still the core values that make up a Bohemia game. Yeah. It's still about exploration and finding out how things work, about creativity and imagination. And just like Arma or Daisy, we're trying to create a platform to connect players with each other yeah. when they play online or when they create something new and share it with uh, the community. And I know that modding is a legendary part of yes. Bohemia's history. What are some of the lessons that you've learned from Arma, learned from Daisy, and brought to modding in Islands? Well, we have our own editor. It's, it's not a standalone application. It's a part of the game. Oh, really? I mean, I'd assume that it was just outside no, like no, all no. other editors. No, we, we would like players to be uh, able to uh, prototype their creations really quickly. Yeah. And so in the editor, the players can obviously create something new, but they can also decide to uh, open and modify existing games, ones that we created or ones that uh, other players made for them. Yeah, I mean, we got the chance to see some scenarios in the initial trailer. Like, those are the ones that you're referring to. Uh, yep. That is fantastic. I mean, tell me a little bit about what it is that we're seeing right here on screen. Uh, well, this is just uh, some random multiplayer game. Uh, there are uh, two guys. Initially, there were three. I think one just, like, fell down the bridge. <laughs> they, are tr they are trying to get uh, some kind of treasure, and... Yeah, they are setting the explosives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to ask about, I know you guys are here at E3. <laughs> hey, look, it's the treasure. I know you guys are here at E3. What are some of the things that players can get their hands on at this event? Well, we'll be showing uh, some of the games that we created with the uh, Islands Game Editor. Uh, but at the same time, we'll be showing how mm -hmm. they can uh, use the editor to create those games. That's awesome. And I mean, I, I know there's a way for people to play right now, is that right? Yeah, actually, they can already play the alpha version of the game. It's available as a part of our Bohemia Incubator program. Mm -hmm. uh, they can find more information on our website, islands.com. And later this year, we are coming to Steam Early Access. That's awesome. And remember, that's islands.com with a Y. We're good. You can remember that. So I want to say, Alish, thank you so much for coming out to Thanks talk about Islands. Us. It's been a pleasure. And of course, I hope you're as excited as I am to come up with some total nonsense when I sit down to play. Our next world exclusive is going to be up in the mezzanine with Sonia. Thank you, Sean. I am so honored to be a part of this world exclusive reveal from developers Clay. You might recognize, you might recognize their name from games like Don't Starve or Don't Starve Together for lonely folk like myself. And last year at the PC gaming show, they actually revealed their sci-fi colony sim game, Oxygen Not Included. And this year they are back. And they are back with a bang. And I am so excited to reveal their upcoming sci-fi RPG game, it is called Griffland. I absolutely love Clay Games and can't wait the chance to try Grifflands. Now, this next title is an interesting one because I'm not someone who plays many VR games, but I got a chance to check this one out several months ago, and I was immediately hooked, so I can't wait to talk about it with the creative director from Ready at Dawn. It's Rue Virasuria to talk about Lone Echo. Welcome, yeah, Rue. Thank it's you It's good for to have me. you here. 
Now, Rue. Yeah. I've gotten the chance to play Lone Echo, but a lot of people here maybe haven't seen it or heard of it. Just walk us through what is the game. So the game, uh, the Lone Echo, is a single exp uh, player experience in VR where you play a cybernetic AI on, the, on a mining station in the rings of Saturn. And basically in the game, uh, you're allowed to move basic, uh, you know, in, uh, in zero G freely. You can interact with everything inside the, the environment. And also you'll see that uh, you have an NPC that you can uh, you know, interact yeah. with. You can use your hands basically to go everywhere you need to go. This was the thing that was so amazing for me. Yeah. You stand still and then you use your arms to grab onto objects in the environment to push and pull yourself around. And it was really amazing to move that way. I've never seen this before. Exactly. I mean, that's basically where the genesis of the project was. We built the mechanic to build the game. So the mechanic was this idea that came from watching I, I, you know, ISS uh, uh, space station astronauts you know, be, yeah, moving yeah. around. And we just basically made uh, this, th this motion that allows you to, to navigate using your yeah. hands just like you would use your legs. So it's been a few months since I got the chance to play. What's been happening in terms of the single player? Here you got some fancy new voice actors lined up. Yeah, we did actually. Uh, when we wrote the story for it, uh, we, uh, we act actually had an actor in mind, uh, somebody that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people out there know, Troy Baker. And Troy decided to take on the role for, the, for awesome. the AI. And of course, Another thing that we get the chance to talk about is yeah. the multiplayer component to Lone Echo called Echo Arena Rue. How does this game work? Uh, basically, it's a, it's a futuristic VR sport where you play, well, 10 people play in two different teams to get a disc inside each other's goals. Now, you might be a little bit confused as to how exactly that works, but don't worry. We're going to take an even closer look at what the gameplay is like for Echo Arena. In zero gravity, players fly faster, passes go farther, strikes hit harder, stakes get higher, and victory sweeter. This is Zero G in the Echo Arena. as some of the Ready at Dawn developers are playing against each other. So, Doug, welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Uh, it's awesome to have you. But listen, before we get into VR, I really wanted you to tell me a little bit more about the Grand Slam event. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I'm a big sports fan. So tennis, golf, rugby, they have their Grand Slam. Now we have it at eSports. So with Intel, ESI, and DreamHack, we now have our Grand Slam, which is really exciting. That's awesome. That's exciting. So I'd like to know a little bit more about Intel's involvement with this game. You know, we've been involved working closely with the best VR developers for a long time, and I'm excited to work with Ready at Dawn as they're delivering the next second generation VR game. They've been an ideal partner to enhance that experience to scale to the most performant CPUs like the i7 and i9. That's amazing. So I was really excited to hear about your announcement earlier. Yeah, Ready at Dawn, Intel and Oculus, we announced that Intel is sponsoring a free release of Echo Arena to all Oculus Rift users when it launches on July 20th for a limited time. And this is because we want as many users as possible on this system. We want to ensure that everyone, including these guys behind us, the gamers behind us as you see, that they try and experience the future of VR and eSports. So speaking of eSports, I would really love to hear more about Intel's involvement with eSports. Intel has a long history as a leader in eSports. We worked with companies like ESL for the Intel Extreme Masters. And we're excited about Echo Arena and the growth of VR eSports. And that's why we're expanding our partnership with ESL and Oculus to launch the VR Challenge League. It kick kicks off in July and it features Echo Arena and The Unspoken. 
and it gives eSports enthusiasts the opportunity to compete in VR at key upcoming events, with the finals happening in Poland in 2018 at the Intel Extreme Masters. Okay, well that sounds kind of awesome. Well, thank you, Doug. I cannot wait to play this game. Uh, it's gonna be coming out July 20th, and you can pre-order it right now, and Rift owners can actually try the open beta on June 23rd, so back to you, Sean. Thank you, Sonia. And once again, I got the chance to play Lone Echo, and I want to stress, you just have to play it. The single-player experience is especially mind-blowing. So once again, that's Lone Echo. Our next guest announced a game two years ago under the title Project Blue Streak, and we now know it as Law Breakers. Here to talk about not just gameplay, but cold, hard dates is the CEO of Bosky Productions himself, Cliff Blazinski. Welcome to the stage, Thanks Cliff. Thanks for having me, man. Now, Cliff, I know that you guys in the past have been doing a lot of alphas and betas. How have those been going? They've been going well. The alpha, it was all right. And then the first beta was good. The second beta was great. Uh, we're doing our final closed beta, June 28th. If you have a key, sign on to Steam, download the latest update. And then we're doing our Rise Up event, which is a full open beta, June 30th. Hop online, play the game, let us know what you think. And I, I got to ask what it has been like to have people play the game to give feedback in those betas. How has that shaped the experience? Well, a lot of uh, developers and publishers, they do these kind of bullshit marketing betas where they're like, oh, it's our beta and the game's out next week. I'm like, that's not really the case. You're not going to be able to fix anything. So for our yeah. game, we found that the Romer shotgun was way too spammy. Overcharge wasn't that exciting, so we sped that up a little bit and we sped up the characters. We took actual feedback and we're integrating it into the game. And these are more than just balance changes. I imagine that speeding up the pace of things creates a pretty different balance dynamic across the board. Yeah, I mean, you change one thing, it's the butterfly effect, it affects yeah. everything else. And is the game going to be balanced on launch? No, that's why we need people's feedback. Play the game, see what characters are overpowered, underpowered, and then we'll introduce new characters and reshuffle the deck. And I know that it can't be in beta forever, so Cliff, tell us when it's out. Can I get a drum roll? Uh, audience, go! Do a thing! So the game is finally dropping on August 8th on PC and PlayStation 4. Oh, that's soon. $29.99, none of that $60 multiplayer only bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> And if you didn't see it online, Cliff took a bow. Yes, $29.99. Curtsy. Well, if you haven't gotten the chance to see the game and follow it throughout the recent PC gaming shows, let's take a look at some people who got the opportunity to play Lawbreakers, and we'll have them speak for themselves. Oh, the speed of this game is intense. Thousand decisions a minute. This is hardcore PvP. Your instincts take over. It's primal. It's exhilarating. Full frontal fury. A million miles an hour. Literally from every angle. I was shaking after the matches ended. It was like a high. One of the fastest games that I've ever played. Are you ready for another one? I'm like, I just need a minute, man. I'm shaking. I'm shaking over here. I think the thing people are going to find in this game the most enjoyable is simply how difficult it is. Because there's a pretty impressive skill gap. You can't just sit down and dominate within an hour or two. Practical skill required. Precision aiming, the ridiculously fast movement. And mechanically, it requires a lot of aim, uh, a lot of vision and game sense. It's a twitch shooter. It's how a twitch shooter should be. The action's going to press you, and if you don't keep on top of it, you're just going to get blown off the map. I think team comp is definitely a huge thing for this game. As we're flying around in zero gravity, you know, it's kind of a new situation for us. How do you keep up with your tank and protect them and heal them, also protect your healer and peel off them while DPS is still being affected and they're being supported? It gets crazy very quickly. The gravity is the biggest thing because that adds so much verticality and you combine the different movement systems of each character where some characters have teleports and some characters have dashes. This gets really wild and insane. Now, literally anywhere you look is potentially an attack point. I am literally under the map, saving myself from a grappling hook, whipping myself into the air, shooting at anyone below. You need to check every possible corner. People are going to fly you with jetpacks. They're going to fly at you with double swords. You're going to have someone that could just jet up in the sky, and all of a sudden, now you have to worry about getting up there. There's some abilities that I just haven't seen before. Medic role is actually phenomenal. It was battle medic, they call it. So it's not one of those medics where you have to sit back. It's not even a thankless role anymore because I'm out there slaying, killing, 
with the rest of my team while keeping them alive. Wraith's got a really good one. With the slide and then the jump into zero G, that's great. Getting like through the map that fast is ridiculously fun. I've been using the Vanguard to drift off the side, so I've been coming up behind the enemy. It took like three, four rounds before they caught on. With the Gunslinger, uh, he's a very precision character, so just you know, spinning around and popping someone in the head real quick, it just it feels great. The game is just aggressive all the time. And this game gives you so much variety of motion. I never felt more tested. It makes you think in a, in a completely different way. The fastest speed I've ever seen in my life. Crazy when you're playing it. Just as a reminder, that Ballin Intel PC is still up for grabs. Don't miss out if you forgot. This bad boy is running an i7 7700K processors, a lot of sevens in there, uh, and an NVIDIA GTX 1080. It's worth more than $2,500. You do not want to miss out. Head over to PCGamingShow.com slash giveaway and put in your information. I think it could run Crisis at max settings. Uh, what do you think, Sean? I think it can, Sonya. And I also think that it can run our next title. I am a master of transition. <laughs> our next game is from Chucklefish, the wonderful folks who helped bring you Stardew Valley and Starbound. Let's take a look at their upcoming game, Wargroove. Today, we're not just going to get a chance to talk about the game, but we will be seeing the editor in action, a live demo on stage. I'm joined by Jay Bayless and Doris Karaskotza <laughs> from Chucklefish. Welcome. It's so great to have Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks. Well, I, I want to say right away, the gameplay reminded me quite a bit of Fire Emblem and Advance Wars. Yeah, um, Fire Emblem and Advance Wars are definitely kind of inspirations mm -hmm. of ours. You know, um, Wargroove is a turn-based tactical strategy game. It's a game about starting to build up your resources every mission and push yeah. forward into your enemy territory and just kind of dominate the map and make the right choices. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of unique kind of gameplay mechanics. So we're bringing right. it into the modern age. We've got online play, uh, mod support, and kind of yeah. content creation as well. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're going to get the chance to look at today. Doris, who's operating the PC right now, tell us what it is we're looking at. So what we're looking at today is the world map of Wargroove. And this is our campaign editor. So these are the tools we use in-house to create Wargroove campaigns, and mm -hmm. we're shipping them with the game so players can create their own scenarios. So I've been placing down map markers, and each of those represent a mission, mm -hmm. and then you link them together to create the path through your campaign. And I know that one of the things you wanted to talk about was the branching path element. Yes, yeah, so you can have branching path, obviously, and the cool thing with that is every branch can have conditions. So, for example, let's say you get a high score in a mission, and that could lead you through a harder path in your campaign. Or you uh, could have a, a secret path that triggers based on some event in the mission. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, let's hop into one of the missions and get that one started. And Jay, walk me through what it is that we're taking a look at. So yeah, this is a, a map editor. This is like straight drawing tiles straight into the battle screen. You know, it's really simple to use, really understandable immediately. Um, you can just kind of draw those tiles straight in there and drop in the full range of units. Uh, Doris is dropping in a commander right now. What are the commander units about? Talk to me about that. Uh, so the commanders are kind of integral to the strategy of Wargroove. You have this unit that kind of represents like the king and queen in chess at the same time. They have unique abilities and act as your avatar in battle, and they're really powerful, so you can kind of push forward really heavily with them. But there's a lot of risk reward in there as well, because if you actually lose that unit, then you actually lose the game. Oh, that's what you mean by the king comparison. Absolutely, it's both yeah. your power unit and the queen, but your loss condition is the king. Yeah, and um, other tools include you can drop down buildings right now. Uh, we've dropped in some HQs. Those are kind of like your base of operations, and to take the opponent's HQ is to win the match. Yeah. But um, on top of like kind of simple and easy to use tools, we've also got more advanced tools. Um, so you can use this zone tool right here, and you can highlight an area and assign like a scripted encounter or sequence to that. Okay, so you know, if I step into that forest, someone can pop out and attack me. Yeah, you could have bandits jump out and attack you from the woods. And the really cool thing about that is that that actually ties back into the campaign map we saw earlier. So maybe that will trigger a condition. Maybe yeah. after encountering those bandits, your story takes a different turn and you decide to... the Vice President of Creative at Monolith. What is up, Michael? Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for the chair. Hell yeah. Well, I, the chair is a nice break mm -hmm. from all that grueling standing. Yeah. And it gives us to do one of the most iconic things in PC gaming, this posture. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Now, you, we've heard about the October 10th release date. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that have been changing and building upon uh, Shadow of Mordor in terms of Shadow of War? I think what we've tried really hard to do, although it's, it seems pretty obvious, is take the things that were good that worked in the first game, so yeah. our combat and the nemesis system and this world that we created, um, and to build on that, but also to take the lessons we learned in the first game and really improve those. So right. really make this into a truly epic fantasy that's uh, kind of up there with if you go and see Return of the King or Lord sure. of the Rings, and really focusing on the story and the characters as well. I mean, you've been talking all throughout about how important story is in Shadow of War. What does that mean in terms of the work that you're doing? It means um, paying off the epic scale, so having these titanic full-scale battles. It means the stakes of the story, so we're facing the most iconic and powerful mm -hmm. villains, you know, Sauron and the Witch King and the Nazgul. And it means having these incredibly memorable and personal characters, so right. allies and enemies that you're working with. And in terms of E3, what are the types of things that you're showcasing here that people can see? Oh, the reason we're really excited for E3 is two things. People being able to get their hands on the game and play it. Um, and also that we're going to be giving demos of the game. But because of the Nemesis system, every single demo we give, we have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> That's awesome. We don't know which orcs or which characters are going to turn up, which stories are going to happen. So every single time people go and see the demo, they're going to see something new, and so are we. Um, and because of that, we really wanted to share that, not just at E3, but for anyone who wants to tune in and watch those demos oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and of course, you see all the information for how to watch those online throughout the entire duration of E3. I know that in a moment, we're going to get a chance to delve a little bit more mm -hmm. into those story bits with a unique cinematic based on one of the characters that was in the trailer. Can you introduce her for us, El Tariel? 
Uh, yeah, so she's one of the new characters we're introducing into the mm -hmm. world and into our story, Altariel. She's the Blade of Galadriel. So she's essentially an assassin that's been sent to Mordor to hunt down the Nazgul and to hunt down anyone corrupted by a ring of power. And you, as Talion, are uh, running around Mordor wielding a ring of power. So there's a, some yeah. interesting tension <laughs> in that relationship with her. But she's, she's this awesome character. And as well as that, um, she gets her own fully playable campaign in our first oh, major awesome. story DLC as well, which is the Blade of Galadriel. Well, before we hop into that, I just want to say, Michael, thanks so much for coming on to thanks talk about Shadow of War. We talked about how important story is to Shadow of War, so let's take a little bit of a look at two minutes of the cinematic, Altariel meeting Talion. So it is true. You killed me. And yet you live. What is that like? To die and live again? Do you feel pain? Do you suffer? What of the city? Of the Palantir? The Nazgul have taken both. They belong to the Dark Lord now. And I have failed. What if you keep fighting? If we use the light of Galadriel, we can recover the ring. Your rings are the cause of all this, Elf Lord. I can see him. I see him. Who are you? I'm the Blade of Galadriel. Since when does Galadriel work with assassins? Great threats make for unlikely alliances. You know this better than most. Now tell me more about this ring. We crafted it to defeat Sauron. But it was lost. The Nazgul will be drawn to the power of the ring. We cannot let it fall into Sauron's hands. The light of Galadriel, give it to us! Stay your hand! My light will protect us, but it will not leave my side. We must move quickly. Try to keep up. Shadow of War. As a huge fan of Shadow of Mordor, I'm really excited to see where the story goes in the sequel. And I'm pleased to say we have one final game to announce. It's from Microsoft, and I'm not even allowed to say the name yet. So joining me to talk about said unnamed game is a creative director for Microsoft Studios, Adam Eisgreen. Welcome, Adam. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Love being Pleasure. here. Now, Adam, I understand that you've been in games for a long time. I have. Um, I am coming up on my 25th year making video games. So yes, yes. you can actually make a career out of being in games. Um, and, you know, I got my start in the DOS days. Remember DOS? Like, oh, yeah, dude. I played Zork all and, and, day. So um, I got my start in the DOS days doing mm -hmm. uh, role-playing games, D&D games. Um, but I spent a heck of a lot of time making real-time strategy games. I was at Westwood Studios for years working on the Command & Conquer series. Ooh. Ooh. Earth and Beyond. Mm. A whole bunch of great games there. Um, Petroglyph, Universal War, Empire War. So a lot of history on PC, and I'm excited to get back to it. Well, I understand that this title is an homage to those roots, mm. and I'm still not going to tell you what it is, but I know you're curious, so let's head right in to this world-exclusive trailer.
Adam, Adam, Adam. <laughs> Age of Empires was the first game I ever saved up my allowance to play as a kid. I'd, oh I'd my weed gosh. my grandma's garden all day. She'd give me like two dollars. <laughs> Here's the latest in loot. Tell me about Age of Empires, ma'am. Man, you know, nobody has been able to play this game except that they found the CD-ROMs for the last 20 years. And what's a CD-ROM? I know, really. These day and age, like, who even has a drive? <laughs> Um, you know, and this has been such a labor of love for us at Microsoft and our development yeah. partner at um, Forgotten Empires to bring back Age of Empires in such a wonderful definitive edition so everyone can experience it. I want to talk about all the stuff we saw in the trailer start to finish. Talk to me about the graphics. Those, those sprites are huh. gorgeous. We have redone every single asset in the original Age of Empires. Every animation, every tile set, every, everything that made Age of Empires great we have um, carefully and lovingly taken and made even better and better. Because I remember just watching the sprites move around in the original game. It was very blocky oh, and yeah, yeah. stuttery. We've 16 facings now, so those fonts don't jitter. You know, uh, a ton of work has gone into making the game and the presentation right. amazing. What about audio? Oh, yeah. So we've re-orchestrated and re-recorded the entire soundtrack to the game using an actual symphony this time. Um, it sounds wonderful. The people at the studios are constantly begging us yeah. to get the soundtrack already. <laughs> Now, I have to ask, there were some aspects of the gameplay back then that were a little janky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have there been any updates to the gameplay in that regard? Yes. So not only have we done things like improved Fine Path, which is, of course, always a big thing in RTS games, uh, we've gone in and actually modernized the UI. Um, a lot of people forget that original age didn't even have an idle villagers button. So all of that stuff, attack move, all of those things that have, uh, people have come to expect. Control groups? Yes, control yes, groups. Yes, 1A. Um, yep. So all of that stuff is all in the game now. So we've taken all of the learnings from the, yeah. the age games that followed and brought it up to those standards. And you know, in, in speaking of modernization, I saw that it said Xbox Live Multiplayer, mm -hmm. which, uh, as you may or may not know, that is the online matchmaking service that Microsoft yep. uses for PC games. I mean, uh, how are you utilizing that? Oh, well, we've completely redone how lobbies work and how games and matching works. You know, we have our friend uh -huh. system, of course. It's built into Xbox Live. So players should have a really amazing experience. We also have a yep. web portal so they can go and track progress and see their results awesome. against all the other players. So it should be a really wonderful experience to play. And what about the beta that we saw at the end of that video? Yes, so the um, game will be out later this year, but you can go right yep. now to ageofempires.com and sign up for our multiplayer beta. Um, you know, RTS games are really, you know, our multiplayer is so important. And we want to make sure that this definitive edition of Age is the absolute best we can make it. Right. So, you know, multiplayer, please come sign, play with us, make the game great. You asked me before we hopped on that you wanted to say one more special bit, <laughs> a little bit of a tease. We understand that it's the 20th anniversary of Age of yes. Empires. What is it you wanted to say? So, yes, uh, Age of Empires, the whole franchise will be 20, it's hitting its 20 mark October of this year. Um, you know, and this is the start here at E3 with you, is the start of the celebration of 20 years of Age of Empires. And that party is going to roll. We're going to continue that. So you're going to hear from us again in Cologne, Germany at Gamescom in August. And uh, we're going to be having a really wonderful Age of Empires event there and talking a whole bunch about, I think, stuff you're going to want to hear. I think I'm going to want to hear it. Yes. You I, tease. Mm. Well, what let me I just do. say, Adam, thank you so, thank much, you so for much for coming for out. Me on. Super thank excited everybody. about Age of Empires. And with that, our slew of announcements comes to an end. Before we depart, let's head back up to the mezzanine with Sonia for one last hello. Thank you, Sean. I had an amazing time being a part of some awesome game reveals and kicking it with you guys today. If you want any more information on any of the games that you saw today, go to PCGamer.com. If you want to hang out with me and check me out on the internet, at OMG, it's Firefox pretty much everywhere. I had a blast, and for one last time, back to you, Sean. Thank you so much, Sonia. I got to say, it was a blast. I hope you had a great time. Thank you all so much for coming out, all of you who braved LA traffic to be here in the morning, all of you who tuned in online. Thanks to our sponsors, Intel, Microsoft, Bohemia, Tripwire, Cy Games, and Nexon for help making this event possible. It is an absolute pleasure to have your support. And I'd also like to give a shout out to all the developers and the publishers at their recent conferences that have been going on in the last week. We were super excited about the titles there and following them closely because we're gamers at heart. And we hope that you too enjoyed what we had to share with you today. And as crazy as it sounds, E3 starts tomorrow. 
So we hope that you get the chance to get your hands on some of the titles that were announced in the last week that you're pumped for. From all the folks at PC Gamer and from me, Day9, have a wonderful day and go play some video games. We'll see you next year.